Hello, welcome to the FAW Conference for 2021. My name is Susan Richman. I am on the board of directors of the Pennsylvania Homeschoolers Accreditation Agency. And I'm also the AP coordinator for Pennsylvania Homeschoolers AP Online. And I also homeschooled my four kids. You'll hear a bit about them as we go along. My topic this year is finding resilience as we shape our new normal. Lessons learned from a pandemic year. It's now been exactly one year since we all knew we were really dealing with something. Remember when shelter at home decrees were put in place for two or maybe three weeks? We all thought that by Easter or Passover, things would all be back to normal. Suddenly, everyone in the world was sort of homeschooling. Remember when there was a shortage of face masks? And now we each probably have two dozen different cloth designs, many of which we or someone we know probably made or we picked up a pack from a huge overstuffed bin at Walmart. They're everywhere. Remember when bleach and hand sanitizer and toilet paper were all totally out of stock? Or when we wore surgical gloves to go shopping and were one of a handful at Walmart to be sporting a mask? Now most of us probably have a dozen bottles of hand sanitizer and Clorox wipes readily available, a supply for the coming decade at least. Things didn't just come one at a time this year. This magnified the panic and concern and feeling out of control. I've thought a lot about good titles for this past year. Could be the year the whole world started homeschooling. You know, did we lose a little bit of diversity points here? We sometimes maybe need to emphasize that many of us have always been homeschooling. For many homeschooling families, of course, this has been one of the first years when homeschooling actually meant homeschooling and not half the time car schooling. Or maybe this year should be called COVID-19. It's a viral disease and a statement of weight gain. Many people have indeed gained the COVID-19. Some of us have been at times a little too comfy at home in our sweatpants, maybe a little too much sitting around indoors. Or maybe it's the year that we did Thanksgiving and Easter and Passover and Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's via Zoom. It was the year that weddings were canceled I'm sure many of you know extended family members or friends who simply decided that they weren't going to even try to do a wedding this year. It's the year of multiple news stories on people running a marathon or a half marathon in their COVID quarantine hotel rooms. They didn't gain the COVID-19. Or how about we think of calling it the year of resilience. The year of resilience in the face of craziness we never would have anticipated, but we're still here. So what is resilience anyway? I've come across some quotes that I found along the way. Here's one. Resilience doesn't mean bouncing back to normal. It means being transformed to a new normal. Resilience means acknowledging that things are not as we want them to be, and then finding ways to live and even thrive in spite of that, changing what needs to be changed, even when it's really hard. Resilience is not a state of being but a set of skills 
honed through adversity. To be resilient isn't to go back to being the way one was before, it's to allow oneself to be changed. I'd like to think of the many ways that we've all been cultivating deliberate resilience during the coronavirus pandemic. One helpful thought, for many, many of the practical realities that we're dealing with that are allowing us to be resilient or at least to survive are changes that have been coming for years now, but never quite took off fully before. But now they've been built up into real systems this year. Think of telemedicine, the thing that was always on the horizon for the last dozen years, but this year, I'm sure many of us have had some sort of telemedicine appointment. Ordering online, something we've all been doing this year for many years, but this year, many of us have started ordering almost everything online. Remember how Sam's Club and Walmart and other stores had already been doing pickup service where you order online and pick up your groceries at the store, they'll bring them out to your car. That really took off this year. Exercise videos at home have always been an option instead of joining a gym. But this year, exercising to videos has really taken off. None of us could go to the gym if we wanted to. Zoom has been around for a number of years, along with other virtual meeting platforms. But this was the year that many of us probably wish we had stock in Zoom. And online learning. Many of us have been doing this for a long time. I've been teaching my online AP US history course for over 20 years. But this year, the whole world started working in online learning. I think there are a lot of things that we can be grateful for this year. Have you maybe used this time to do some home decluttering that you've been meaning to get to? You finally had time to do it. Have you read more this year? Have your kids read more? Or at least have you caught up on Netflix binging? Did you maybe get a new pet or appreciate more the companionship of the ones you already had? Have you tended your garden or outdoor spaces more regularly because you've literally been home more. This year we had a thriving vegetable garden in part because I wasn't doing any traveling during the spring and summer. We had to actually buy a new freezer to put up our produce for this year. Did some extended family members still figure out a way to have a wedding? Were some new babies born, even if birth experiences were a little bit challenging, where you didn't get to see a newborn baby right away? Did your family create a way to work safely, either from home or by making whatever changes needed to be made at your workplace? And were you able to keep your sound roof over your heads all year long? Did you find ways to navigate continually being with your spouse and your kids and find ways to respect each other's privacy and provide needed hugs and community? Have you set up regular ways to keep in touch with extended family, with grown kids via Zoom? I know in our family, we'd never made a regular habit of calling or Zooming with our kids previously, but somehow once the pandemic hit and we were all stuck at home, my husband set up a regular weekly meeting and we've stayed with it all year. And I think we're gonna continue. Have you discovered some inner resources and spiritual strength to keep going 
in ways you might not have suspected you even had? Have you focused on learning how to maybe value your spouse more during this time? I'm sure many of us have been grateful for whatever relationships we have in our lives with the people that we could still keep seeing. And I think our homeschooling has in some ways helped us have some special resilience. We already, after all, kind of liked being with our family members, maybe more than some people in society. We value time at home. And we all have great home libraries already. And we could get new books online. Many homeschoolers in high school were already taking effective online classes, so their education plans didn't really need to change that drastically, not like the kids in school had to. Our kids also already knew that they had to take special initiative to have opportunities that they wanted in their lives. They knew things wouldn't just be handed to them as options to pick from. I wanna share a little bit about the initiative shown by my own four grown children. Our son, Jesse, who's in his forties, was able to use a little outbuilding that he created two years ago as a new and very valued quiet space. He's using it now for Zoom meetings. He's a college professor and for his older kids for quiet study areas. They do have seven children, including a new COVID baby. And then this year, Jesse added on a little second room, rather like Pa and the little house on the prairie, adding on another half of the lean-to on their homestead out on the prairie to make a bigger house. He added on to his little house to make an extra room for his wife, who teaches piano lessons from their home. They didn't quite feel comfortable having people coming into their home for this. So now she can meet with people in this little space outside their house and they have windows for ventilation and they can be spaced apart as needed to be safe. And they can have piano lessons safely and carry on. It's been a lovely thing. My son took a lot of initiative to do that building project. And this past fall, our son decided that he would indeed take the paternity leave that his university offered him. Again, their baby was born just in June. He figured this was a good time to do that. Our second son, Jacob, adapted quickly to working from home in his job with Google, along with his wife, who works for Amazon. And he used his time at home too, to work on some major home improvement projects, including finishing their, the flooring and their basement level of their beautiful home and overseeing a huge new deck and stairway project in their backyard. And he's also used this time to be very involved in helping raise their one-year-old little son, including helping him learn the basics of skiing this past winter. They also bought a small RV so they could travel safely without needing planes or motels. And I really liked this message from our son Jacob and his wife Bianca's New Year's card. They wrote, through all the trials and tribulations 2020 has brought, we feel truly blessed with resilience. Our older daughter, Maya, continued being very resourceful in renovating their old new home in the Czech Republic where they've lived for a couple of years now and doing at home things like building a huge chicken yard in their new, with their new little flock and raising a major vegetable garden last summer and putting up lots of fruit from their small orchard. She's currently enjoying a challenge of spending 1,000 hours outdoors this year, and her two kids are benefiting immensely 
from the winter hikes, skating on local ponds, building snowmen, and much more. Maya has always been working from home as she teaches in our AP online program. So her working didn't need to change. Our younger daughter, Hannah, had her disappointments. This was the year she qualified to be in the Boston Marathon, but of course it was canceled. But she and her husband did the, what I call the COVID trifecta. They managed the successful transition to work at home. They acquired a wonderful new puppy and they bought their first home and threw themselves into home renovations. And they kept us up to date on all of this via our live Zoom um, discussions every week, giving us live house tours each Sunday. All of our kids got to take part in those two and got to see all of their progress in their new home. And Hannah's husband organized a month long virtual team walking and running program that kept us all outdoors and active during November, 2020. And it gave us a break from obsessing about the election. I did a little experiment with my AP online students. I call it my five, four, three, two, one experiment. I first did this last year when we were about three weeks into quarantine and we all thought that was a lot. And then I updated it just recently and I wanna share some of my students' responses on this. I call it five, four, three, two, one, because I asked them to share about their year in this format. I asked them to look around right where they're sitting right now and notice and see maybe five things that they really appreciate having and that still work for them even during this pandemic. Then I want them to think of four things that they were grateful for that they did this past year. Then to think of three people that they really cared about and who they have been able to reach out to in meaningful ways over this past year and ask them to reflect on how keeping in touch with friends and extended family has changed for them. Then I asked them to think of two things that they've learned over this past year that they might not have learned had it not been for the pandemic situation. And finally, I asked them to share one helpful thought or quote or line from an uplifting prayer or poem that helped them find resilience and courage through this year. I've seen some definite themes in what my students have shared about what has helped them personally find resilience. And I'm gonna share some of those with you now. First, many of the students shared that it really helped them to keep active and fit, often in new ways that they hadn't done in the past. My student Kayla wrote, near the beginning of COVID, my dad decided to get a membership to go paddle boarding and canoeing at a lagoon in our area. Doing this really helped with getting through the first half of a year of COVID, since it was something we could do to get out of our house while still staying safe. We also went on a lot of hikes and my dad even got an entire book of hikes and trails to do around San Diego. That dad was showing real resilience and helping his family learn how to be resilient in the face of a difficult situation. They were finding what they could do. My student Evie wrote, over the summer, my family and I went on hikes every morning through a park near our house. We still do that now, but not if it's really cold, like below zero degrees. It was really nice to get out of the house and get a breath of fresh air. I've always been a pretty active person and I relied on swimming 
and a bit of running to keep me in shape. However, once COVID hit, swimming was canceled. I started to work out to keep in shape and gain more muscle. I began running and lifting weights and I haven't looked back since. Every time I work out, I feel great after it. And it was also so fun. She found a new way to keep fit. My student, Caitlin wrote, I'm very content that when looking for Corona safe, small group or solo activities, I stumbled upon snowboarding. Most likely without the pandemic, I would have stuck to safer and more comfortable sports and hobbies, but snowboarding offered itself as the perfect pastime that could continue to operate during even the worst parts of the pandemic. I'm grateful that this sport has now given special significance to the colder seasons. My student Ethan wrote, I'm grateful for my scooter. I've always had a scooter and been a scooter rider. I learned on a scooter before I ever got a bike. And now I find bicycles unwieldy and heavy compared to the scooter that I can pick up whenever I want and just chuck it in the back of the car. Thanks to the pandemic, I couldn't go to the pool, yet I had more time than ever. So I started riding my scooter all over the place, exploring town and taking advantage of the nearby network of railroad lines that have now been paved over into trails. I think I've probably done close to 500 miles since the pandemic started. My scooter hasn't given me any reason to think I can't do 500 more. Elisa wrote, taking care of both your physical and mental health are really important. And I learned that there are good ways and bad ways to try to be healthy. Olivia, who was a student in my summer epidemics class that I ran, wrote that at first adjusting to the new normal was definitely not fun for me. I'm the type of person who loves to constantly be busy and hates going a day without leaving the house. After a week or two of being bored though, I started entertaining myself. I went jogging and found out I enjoy jogging. That was a shock. I went biking every day and found out I love biking. I realized I had more time to spend with my dog and ended up going on long walks with her every day. I also saw that my students gained a sense of themselves as people who can persevere and thrive even when things are tough and as people who can find consistent ways to do this. Kayla wrote, on a serious note, I learned how to keep going even when life got sucky. Last spring was pretty tough and I was in a bad mental space, but I'm proud of the fact that I pulled through at the end of the school year and got top scores on all of my AP tests. This spring is also proving to be extremely challenging, but I'm now confident that I can and will end the year strong again. My student Caroline wrote, being the middle child, I've always been a little bit quieter than my siblings and I enjoy observing things and listening to what others have to say. Honestly, I've learned quite a lot. Because of this though, I'm usually filled with feelings and emotion on the inside. I'm much more talkative now, partially due to my siblings being away at college, but one way that I've learned to empty my bottled up emotions is through my diary. Writing down and reflecting on my days brings me such joy. And it's the one place I've always felt safe sharing everything. Journaling is something that everyone knows about, but not many actually do. And it's truly one of the best stress relievers I can think of. 
my student Caitlin wrote, something that I have perhaps properly learned this year and one of my proudest and greatest accomplishments is living in a healthy and productive schedule. By this, I mean, I have finally been able to consistently keep up with, well, of course, not perfectly, my homework, social time, healthy sleep schedules, incorporating relaxing time, and other important parts to my life. I have been chasing a balanced and productive schedule ever since I can remember, with some successful periods and some not. And when the coronavirus quarantine first started and my phone addiction soared, my ideal schedule was as far from reality as it could be. I thought with my junior year coming up, being out of school for a year and being in a global pandemic, that I stood no chance that this was the year, unlike all the meh years prior, and that I would completely crash. Come August, this school year was completely different from past years, but completely in the opposite way I had envisioned. Somehow, I don't know why or how, I was able to pull myself out of my treacherous cycle of meh productivity, meh scheduling, meh sleep schedules, meh habits, and just overall using my time mehly. It sounds like I achieved some type of academic nirvana. But what I merely mean is I now have learned how to maintain a working and healthy day-to-day -day schedule still complete with many wasted hours on Pinterest and homework procrastination, yet characterized by a continued commitment to use my time purposefully as best I can. That's a pretty good life lesson to learn, especially in a pandemic year. I found my students discovered new ways to be involved in serving others in keeping up their faith life, even with worship services shifting away from in-person services to Zoom. My student Evie wrote, before COVID hit, my family had always been really active in our church community. We ran the little weekly cafe and volunteered for a lot of events. It was all canceled in April of last year. So we were all fishing for some way to stay connected. My siblings and I decided to each pick three or four elderly folks who live alone to contact. We emailed them and called them to check in and see how they were doing. It was a really nice way to still be connected with them. I really like it that Evie and her siblings took the initiative to think of that idea. My student Caroline wrote, the last thing that I've been so thankful for is my Bible. Without reading and diving into God's word every day, I don't know how I would have made it through quarantine. I've needed encouragement every day to keep pushing through these scary and uncertain times. With him as my light and my rock, I've been able to fear things less. I've been so stressed with those more susceptible to COVID, including my mom, who is a healthcare worker. Without prayer and knowing the Lord holds everything together, I don't know how I could make it. My student Elisa wrote, I really appreciate having my Bible. It was my grandmother's before she passed away and I love reading it and learning more about God. Sometimes I'll find highlighted or underlined passages that my grandmother marked and that makes me happy. And I'm sure she feels a sense of connection to her grandmother. One of my students, Katie, 
decided that she and her older sister home from college because of COVID would start a major service project. They called it Saturnia. And as they were both very artistic, both in writing and in visual art, they decided they would start a service to connect people in their area who might need a boost in their day and their hearts by receiving a gift of art created by a young person. The site gained such popularity that they began adding in adult artists. Everyone was volunteering their time. They made lots of connections for people in their community and across the country. It grew into a really special, special project and gave her a way to give back to others, to raise their spirits at this time. I had two different AP students, one in New Jersey, one in California, who each made over 2000 face masks, both sewn cloth ones and plastic face, face shields to donate to healthcare workers. These were their Eagle Scout projects. COVID-19 truly gave both of those students their Eagle Scout project. They turned something really difficult into something that could serve others. I've also seen my students grow in seeing the value of gratitude for very simple everyday things that we so often take for granted. One student, Kayla, wrote, I'm grateful for my neighborhood even though I've been in the same house and neighborhood all of my life, and I'm keen to move away. I'm incredibly grateful for the wonderful area I live in. My student Brady wrote, I'm grateful that my parents still both have jobs. Many millions of people have lost their jobs or businesses, and I'm grateful that my parents still have theirs. I'm grateful that I go to a school, now that he's homeschooled, that is prepared for a situation like this and have wonderful supportive teachers. I've learned so much this year and feel very prepared for college. So many students in public and private schools in my area have learned very little this year. I'm grateful I have a home as it's very cold outside. I'm thankful that I do not have the coronavirus and that I'm healthy. I'm grateful that I have had the opportunity to spend time with my family. I got to spend a lot of time with my family. We play, played board games and watched lots of movies. And remember this was written after spending a full year with his family. I'm grateful to hear that families are still enjoying time together. Peyton, who was a student in my summer epidemics class where we were learning about the impact of all sorts of epidemics on US history, wrote last summer that her family was really discovering the value of developing some way to mark each day of the week as unique. I know many of us have found ourselves wondering, what, what day is it? What, what day of the week is it? We all lost track of time in many ways. But Peyton wrote, my family has made new traditions as well. Saturday is now waffles and fruit smoothies day. Sunday is game day. Wednesdays are fun days where we make Mickey Mouse ears to donate to children at a nearby hospital. Thursdays are ghost adventure nights. We've been binge watching the show so much, I made bingo cards for it. And Fridays are pizza nights. So Peyton always knows what day of the week it is. And again, her family found new ways to be of service to others in their community. Many of my students realize with real gratitude how helpful digital technology is right now. I know it's it's very common for many of us to complain about digital technology and to talk about the dangers of digital technology and what it does to adults and to young people.
but my students realized that it's been a lifesaver this year. Evie wrote, I hate to list technology as my first point of something that I'm grateful for, but the more I think about it, I am really grateful for it. Over quarantine, we would Zoom weekly with our family, and it was just really nice to see their faces, even through a computer screen, and get to talk with them. Every week, my older sister and I would FaceTime with our friends and catch up with each other and talk about the very exciting life of quarantine. Even though we couldn't see them face to face, we could still see them through a screen. I can also talk with my friends all the time now, which is a huge plus for me. And again, a theme I saw in many of my students was appreciating their families and how this year has often given them more time for positive relationships with parents and with siblings. Evie wrote, as I'm typing this right now, my younger brother and sister are sitting across from me and reminding me of the joys of family. During lockdown, it was so nice to have someone to talk to all the time. I know my sisters and I would have random talks about what we could or would have been doing had COVID not happened. The list went on and on. But even though it was hard to be shut in, my family made it so much more enjoyable. My sisters and I all share a big bedroom. And so we almost always talk a long time as we lay in bed at night. It's just really nice to have someone to talk to about random things. My parents are my greatest encouragers. They are just the best. I know I can always talk to them about anything. And I'm so grateful. I have them. Caroline wrote, I know this sounds crazy, but growing up, I never had the strongest relationship with my older brother. I knew him as the cool high school quarterback everyone knew in town. And that was about it. He was always training for football or locked away, studying his AP online courses in the basement. Don't get me wrong. He was the sweetest brother I could ask for, but I never spent tons of time just talking with him. When he came home from college due to COVID, we really bonded and he's helped me so much. He's honestly the smartest and most hardworking person I know, and he gives the best advice. I'm so thankful our relationship has flourished during quarantine together. Nicholas wrote, when I look around myself, I see my family members. They are the ones I am most grateful for as they've provided valuable emotional and academic support throughout my entire life and especially now. Catherine wrote, my parents are the best. I definitely don't get along with them well all the time, but I know that they always want the best for me and want to hold my hand the whole way through life. My student Ethan wrote, I'm grateful for my new relationship with my father. We didn't really used to talk much before COVID came and put him at home all the time. Then I think he noticed some things he hadn't seen before and he started to talk to me more. Now we go out to breakfast every other Saturday morning and we get to talk about things like college on the horizon or how to handle emotional stress or just random stuff about how cars work or how the week went. Cecilia wrote, Lockdown has been so much more manageable with an optimistic, loving, older sister. I had her older sister as a student too, and I know she is a wonderful girl. Many of my students 
noted how they've been valuing simple activities such as cooking or looking out a bedroom window. Caroline wrote, another thing I've learned and discovered about myself is how much I enjoy cooking. I always loved it, but this summer I found the time to cook healthy meals and experiment with different recipes. I always wanted to become a vegan, but well, I love salmon too much. So throughout quarantine, I've primarily been a pescatarian and I'm never looking back. She's even made many videos showing many of the foods she's made and she even created a Google doc where her friends in her AP online classes can share their own favorite new recipes. I know another thing my own daughter Hannah has started doing this year, speaking of cooking, is she taught herself how to make challah, the special braided bread to celebrate the Jewish Sabbath. She never had time to do that before and now she makes it every week. And even made videos of it to show the students at her synagogue where she works how to make it. I had students who wrote about how special it was just to look out the window in their bedroom and see the changing seasons and see what was happening outside, to feel a connection of the world in this simple way. Cecilia wrote that something she was grateful she did this past year was to get ice cream with her sister downtown. Sometimes she wrote, the really small things in life are the most important. And I'm really glad my sister and I went out this past summer and got ice cream. Ice cream is after all, a mental health food, she wrote. My students also shared about how it is possible to find new ways to develop or continue important friendships. Caroline wrote, I had mixed feelings about starting this school year with only online classes. I've always taken most of my classes at an Episcopal private school in Greenville, South Carolina with maybe one or two online classes added in. My older siblings only ever did online classes in high school because they spent tons of time focusing on sports in high school, but I've always loved in-person classes. I thought I would have no true friends this school year, but I'm so thankful for the people I've met through my Pennsylvania homeschoolers AP online class. Honestly, I've met some of the nicest people through this class and I hope to know them for the rest of my life. Caitlin wrote that pre-pandemic, she was strongly introverted and revolved very little around other people. And she says she operates pretty much the same now, yet I've been able to incorporate a healthy a necessary amount of interaction and dependence upon others. I never loved texting, calling, or Snapchatting with people just because in-person interaction felt the most meaningful to me. And I never felt enough energy for other online medias. However, the quarantine gave me no choice of preference and although I still do it reluctantly half the time, I now understand the necessity and responsibility I have to check up on people, maintain consistent relationships and be socially present. One of my closest friends has forced these habits out of me as she is built entirely different oppositely and has FaceTimed me constantly pulling me out of my lonely quarantine habitat. I've also been able to communicate more regularly with many of my international friends and those from my previous French communities. She lived abroad for a year. In a rare instance, what I'm experiencing here in New Jersey, in the USA, is incredibly similar to what my extended family and friends were enduring in Mexico France, Ukraine, or anywhere else right now. 
many of my students also realize the value of music in their lives and how it can uplift their spirits. One student wrote, I can't make it through the day without listening to music and all of my many playlists for different occasions really help me stay sane. And I have almost the whole Hamilton soundtrack memorized. Ethan wrote, I'm grateful for my headphones. I didn't realize when I got them, but my headphones have been a massive blessing to me this year. Thanks to them, I've been able to listen to lots of my favorite songs when things get difficult. A lot of what I listen to, I might be hesitant to recommend to others because it can be very disturbing. But if you ever think that no one else has ever felt lonely, music will prove to you otherwise. Many of my students also realize the value of having more time to read. Evie wrote, books. I love reading and quarantine was the perfect time to read. I read a good amount and it sort of phased into the school year. So now I'm reading more than I ever was in past years. Katie wrote, since everything else got canceled, I had plenty of time to read just for fun. I read The Once and Future King about a week ago, and I'm finishing up Anna Karenina right now. Not a bad little sideline to take up during COVID. Caitlin wrote, lastly, I'm proud to say that although I took a global pandemic to get me to sit still, I was able to finally and consistently become a reader. When I was young, I often enjoyed books, but for the last four years or so, the majority of my reading came only from school assignments, and I wasn't inspired by any personal motivation. This past year, and especially these past few months, I was able to truly find that motivation with the help of some amazing books. I'm incredibly proud to have built this habit because of all the stories books have to offer and that it takes away time from less beneficial habits like scrolling on Twitter for hours. Many of my students shared about the value of trying out new things that take lots of time or lots of guts to get good at. Katie James wrote that she's been involved in medieval everything this year. I've made piles of knockoff illuminated manuscripts. I've learned all about medieval calligraphy and made my own ink for it. I found some great medieval great courses and devoured the lectures. Cecilia wrote that one thing she did was getting a job at a bakery department at a local grocery store. She wrote, I absolutely love cake decorating and supporting local businesses. So this job fits like a glove. The thing that pushed me into applying was all the extra time I had from COVID restrictions. Applying for the bakery job was really nerve wracking, but I'm so much more confident as a person than I was before doing it. COVID, oddly enough, really pushed me to explore new things that I'd wanted to do, getting a job, volunteering at an equestrian summer camp and getting out of my comfort zone. My favorite quote of this year is perseverance or regret. My student Nicholas accomplished a new physical skill. He learned how to juggle a soccer ball, not with his hands, but with his feet and his knees and his legs. And this even turned into a nice special friendship with a relative of a next door neighbor, someone who came from the Republic of Georgia and so had gone to a special soccer school where he grew up. It was a nice way for Nicholas to spend a lot of time learning a new skill and getting to know somebody helpful. This has been a year when 
I heard from many of my past AP Online students, I've always gotten occasional emails from past students thanking me for the class and the impact I might have had on their lives in some way. But this year, I think many students took advantage of the extra time on their hands to keep in touch with people that have meant something to them in their lives. I've gotten more of these letters than any other previous year. I'd like to encourage each of you to consider writing a letter, maybe even a handwritten letter to someone in your life who's made a difference. And as I think back on this year, I think often of this thought expressed by one of our advanced placement, our AP online teachers, who was agreeing with me to give some extra understanding and an extra refund to a homeschooling family that was hit hard financially and emotionally this past year. Their student had had a number of surgical medical difficulties and emergencies that were of course all compounded by the COVID related challenges. This teacher wrote to me when I was suggesting that maybe we give a bigger refund to this family who hadn't quite requested the refund on time. She said, this year has been such a trial for so many of us. And if we can offer snatches of grace to one another in the midst of it, that seems to me to be a worthy thing. And in closing, how will you look back on this year, this time? What positive stories will be part of your shared COVID year? What sorrows need to be remembered? And what strengths and new skills and new resolves and positive new habits have you been able to develop? What life lessons of resiliency have each of you gained this year? And I'd like to share here about the importance of spreading ripples of hope. Maybe like my student Caroline who wrote, I've had many bumps in the road throughout quarantine, but one way I've been able to get through them is knowing that I can help encourage and inspire others going through similar things. I've always loved being kind to people and through the things I've gone through, I've been able to relate and encourage others in similar situations. Life will never be easy, but always remember that you are truly special and loved by so many. I never thought I would make it through last year. And without my support system and rest in God, I might not have. My life goal is to never judge, but to only love people because you never know what someone else might be going through. Thank you very much for listening here. And I hope you can look back on some of the positive lessons that you and your family have indeed been able to learn this year. And I wish you all resilience. <laughs>